Right here, the knot's done. So now we're going to string this bow up. So I'm going to be using some polypropylene rope. Just slip one side in, like so. And you want to measure three inches down and then tie the loop there. Here we go. So now I'm just going to string this up and step through it. All right, here's the prod. So it's got a nice flex to it. You can see it's not bending much in the very center. Got a poke for you guys. It's got a good amount of weight to it. it took a lot of effort to string this thing. So. Here's the prod. So now we're going to start working on the stock or the tiller of the crossbow. And once we get the tiller set up, then, and once this is kind of set for a little while, you know, so it balances out and it settles in, I'll be able to weigh this and see just how much this crossbow is pulling. So let's get started on the stock. All right, so let's get started on the tiller or the stock of the crossbow. The first thing we're going to do is lay it out on a piece of 2x4. I'm going to be using uh, just a regular 2x4. This, I believe, is Douglas fir. So it's a softwood. But the trick is just to make sure you find a dense piece, and it will hold up. So here it is. This whole thing is, I believe, 35 inches long. When you're Choosing a piece, you want to make sure that the grain, if you can see, runs pretty much up and down. And you want to make sure that you've got a nice dense piece with fairly tight growth ring pattern. This is going to give you a good amount of strength. You also want to make sure that if there are any knots, they're not in this portion of the crossbow. Down here in the grip, back here and the butt that's fine you know you just want to make sure that it's fairly solid and what you want to do is first mark the top here the way I marked this is essentially you take your crossbow prod place it on here and you want to mimic the angle that the bow makes when the string contacts the bow this will give you a good angle so that when you draw this back, the string isn't under a lot of pressure and that it moves fairly freely. Now what I did, all these cutouts are optional. You could probably get away with just using this block, but I'm going to make it look a little more pretty. So what I did was first, these two markings here where we're going to be drilling some holes. We're going to be using these holes to mount the stock. So these are four inches from the end. This, the beginning of this cutout is five inches from the end and the end of the cutout is at nine inches. So it's a four inch cutout and it's an inch and a half in. Moving on down at 16 inches. I marked this because this is the, going to be the end of my grip and the beginning of where my trigger mechanism is going to go because this is the length of draw here. You come down to 22 inches and you start this curve here. The next one stops at 25 and then I mean 23 and then at 25 this secondary curve starts at 27 this one ends and at 30 this one ends so there it is so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut all of these pieces out this end piece and everything and then we'll see what it looks like from there so here's the stock all cut out so what I'm going to be doing is just rounding the back 
rounding under here, rounding this, rounding the handle grip, rounding this, and I'm going to keep this front part square. So I'm just going to round it, soften up the edges, make it a little easier to hold. But as you can see, this is how it is right now. So once I do that, then we can start working on the trigger mechanism. And then after that, we'll work on figuring out where the bow is going to go. So I'm going to go round this off. You could use a file. I'm going to be using a grinder. But you could easily use a rasp or file just to round all of these edges. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what that looks like. 